Good morning, church. What's the official colour for the day? <laughs> you know, sometimes when we, you wake up in the morning, you open your wardrobe, what should I wear today? I think for many of you, it was a very clear, it was a very clear direction. I should wear this colour. Even though there's, there are lesser people this morning, uh, you still look good. Did, did we have a wonderful worship today? Yeah? I believe that we had a wonderful worship. The presence of God is very strong. And I just want to honour you for being here in the house of God. Someone told me, so I was like setting out the, the WhatsApp wishes, right? Uh, so wishing everyone, wishing everyone. And so did someone, someone messaged me, happy holidays. I said, uh, well, my holiday starts uh, maybe 12.30. La. Maybe 1245 See how, see how attentive you are, right? But this morning, I honour you for being here in the house of God. Amen? Turn to your neighbour and just say, good to see you in the presence of God this morning. Yeah? Because that's what we have here. It's a new year. Okay? Um, obviously, I'm married to Chinese, lah, huh? so that means I also did a reunion, did the first day. Right, uh, someone posted on, on his on his Facebook, uh, his Instagram, yesterday. First meal of the new year. So I believe, along with the one point something billion people in the world, this is what the new year sounds like. This is what the new year looks like. Even though it's the twenty sixth of January, many look at it as the second day of the new year. So I want to just bring us to a reflection of a new year. You know, why look forward to a new year? Have you ever thought of that? Why do we look forward to new year? Is it because uh, for some of us, the bonuses happen? Is it because um, that's the year end when we get the holidays, so we look forward for the new year coming? Why do we look forward for a new year? And I think that's something that's uh, just to think about. Why look forward? Why look forward for something new? I want to suggest a couple of thoughts. Maybe because it is an opportunity for a new beginning. It is an opportunity to start afresh. Start anew. A new year is also a good time to reflect on the past year. Reflect on what has been happening. An opportunity to look back. Tough times, challenges, victories, triumphs, mountains that we have been able to overcome. We look back on the past. We look back on the relationships of the past and we reflect on our past. But like, we've been, the, the current theme, the current theme that is going on is about renewal, restoration, redemption. And a new year is an opportunity for renewal. This morning, I just entitled my, my, my simple message, a renewed, a renewed call. A renewed call. Because it is an opportunity for a renewal, for new beginnings. See, I believe God made us with a capacity for renewal. God made man, God made humankind with a capacity for new beginnings. Every 24 hours, you think about it, if you had a tough day at work, if you had a tough day in whatever you're doing, the new day dawns with an, another opportunity. The new day dawns that we can start again afresh. And so we have a cycle, God has made cycles 
of new days for renewal, for renewal in our lives. To forget the, the last day, to learn from the last day, to move forward. And in that daily thing, there's also a cycle of seven days. Every seven days to start over, to improve, to forget the past, to move forward. Every seven days, we have a day for rest, a Sabbath, a Sabbath. And we are here today on the Sabbath because we acknowledge the weekly cycle of rest. I was talking to someone earlier today, so I asked him, when do you start work? He said, Monday. I said, wow, no, next Monday. One week. One week. But this is a person who works very hard. So this is an opportunity to rest. But in this opportunity of resting, there's also an opportunity now to refocus. Refocus. A Sabbath is an opportunity, not just a rest, but a refocusing on the Creator. Refocusing on God. So today, I want to lead us into some thoughts. Amen? Are we ready? Are we here to gain something from the Lord this morning? Amen? Let's look to God in prayer. Let's pray. Father, this morning, we thank you and we are thankful for your presence so real in this place. We are reminded that even if there's just two or three of us, that you are here in our midst. And the reason that we are here, Father, this morning is because we come to celebrate one with another your presence in our lives. We thank you for the new year. We thank you for your blessings of the past. We believe for greater blessings in the days to come as we focus and refocus our attention this morning in your presence, on your word, we ask Holy Spirit, speak to each and every one of us. Let your word become life to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. New beginnings. When we talk about Sabbath, we're talking about we are refocusing on God as our creator. Because God is the one who ultimately started anew. Someone said this, every now and then, God does something which guarantees that those among whom he is working will never be the same again. Let me say that again. Every now and then, God does something which guarantees that those among whom he is working will never be the same again. I'll give you an example. 2,000 years ago. See, Christmas was just a month ago. Just one month ago, we were celebrating Christmas. I have a confession here. In my house, well, I haven't taken down the Christmas tree yet. Anybody else with a Christmas tree still up? One honest person. The rest of you just, just put ang paus in your tree, right? 2,000 years ago, God did something that seemed insignificant. A virgin gave birth to a baby in a very small town in a very small country in one corner of the world. God did something small that turned out to be very significant among those he was working with. And that small incident has swept the world. 
every now and then, God does something which guarantees that those among whom He is working will never be the same again. That's the God that we serve. He can do something that can change everything. Amen? That's the hope we have. Someone said, you know, every, every time we low, we go for our, our close song, right? We speak all the words. That's hope. That is hope. We hope this year is going to be good. We hope you're going to see blessings. We hope you're going to see this. We hope for this. We hope for that. But you know where is the only surety? God. Amen? God. The only surety. And when God works, He can do something amazing. So I want, to, I want you to just focus that this new year is an opportunity to renew. An opportunity to pick up again. Start again afresh. We are at the threshold. This is the first Sunday of the new year as we celebrate it. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for God to do a new thing. I'm ready to put away all the past rubbish. I'm ready to put away the sins of the past. I'm ready to put away the mistakes of the past. Sometimes to put away some of the miscues of the past and to start again. Isn't that the opportunity for a new year? There was a poem I read. It says this, I wish that there was some wonderful place called the land of beginning again, where all our mistakes and all our heartaches and all our poor selfish griefs can be dropped like a shabby old coat at the door, never to be put on again, the land of beginning again. That's a good place, right? To start again. And I believe there is. But it takes faith to get there. It may not be easy to get there, but it is worth going there. And the place where God will do something that will change you forever. Anybody here wants God to change us? Okay, just me and Pastor. Do we want God to change us? Do we want God to move in our lives? It's us, what we want. Because God is wanting to. Let me take a book out of Pastor Gideon's, let me take a page out of Pastor, Pastor Gideon's book. I'm going to give you the four points. I'm going to give you my, my, my four points now, straight up, for you to hear it. Four questions, actually. What comfort zones, what comfort zones may God be calling you to leave in order to start a journey to a land of starting again? What comfort zones? Second, what, what frightens you the most about what God can be calling you to do? What frightens you? What scares you? Thirdly, in what ways have you resisted God's willingness to bless you? And fourth, fourth question, do you are you beginning to sense something new that God is calling you to be a blessing to others? Four thoughts. Four thoughts. This morning, I want us to turn to the book of Genesis, chapter 12. Familiar passage. Genesis, chapter 12. The story of Abram. 
the call of Abram. Can I have it on the screen? Genesis chapter 12. I'm going to read from verse 1. The Lord had said to Abram, this is before his name was changed, go from your country, your people, your father's household, to the land I will show you. Verse 2. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Verse 4. So Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him and Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. This is the passage that we have read many times. And I want to explore this with us this morning. To explore and to see what God is saying to us at this season of time. Now, the Bible says that Abram was 75 years old. 75. He was not a young man. He was not a young man, and at this season, he was pretty well settled down. He had accumulated great wealth, flocks, herds, property, wealth, one wife, one nephew, and many servants, and uh, all his entourage. And if you looked at him, it would seem that his life was not going to change very much. Everything was Every day was normal. You know, some of us, we, we, we always comment, every day is like a routine. It's like a routine day after day after day after day. And sometimes it's not a bad thing because it's stable. You don't have to worry. It's stable. I believe Abram was like that. Everything was good, was going well. But the Lord has said to Abram, and I believe there was a stirring within him. Maybe something in his soul, something in his heart, stirring, a little bit of unrest. He felt a need to change in direction. He felt a need to do more. And that's what I'm proposing for us this morning to do more. Maybe some of us are heading in a direction aside from where God wants of us. You know, it's very interesting. Uh, when I heard Pastor Peter's last song, Pastor Peter had no idea what I was preparing to speak. I had never seen his song list. And when I saw that last song, I just turned to my wife and said, like, you know, that's like a confirmation. Because God, I believe God has a destiny for each and every one of us. So it's, it's, it's very encouraging for me when the worship team sing songs that confirm what the preacher is intending to say. Sounds like God is in the house, amen? That God is speaking one message to each and every one of you here. Turn to your neighbour and say, you're not here by chance. You're not here by chance. Each and every one of you who decided to come here this morning is because God has a word for you. God has a destiny for you. Abraham, God spoke to him and told him, go. Go. So, the first thing is that Abraham had to go. To go from his people, to go from his town to grow from his household. And I want to propose to you, the going here talks about a change of perspective. A change in doing something, to do something different. To stop doing what we have been doing in order to start doing something else. They say that Albert Einstein, I don't know whether it really was Albert Einstein, but they say that they attribute that phrase to him that if you keep on doing the same thing over and over again, 
and you expect different results, that's insanity. Because if you do the same thing over and over again, you're going to get the same results. You know, and sometimes when they, we cook, and, and different ones cook, right? And, and it turned out bad, right? And then the next time you cook, do the, the exact same steps. It's going to turn out the same way. I've decided to stop cooking because basically I tried a few times. And it always turns out the same. So now I'm becoming a consumer. She cooks, I eat. It's working out well for me so far. Okay? But if you do the same thing over and over again and you expect different results, it's not going to happen. A change of perspective is needed. For those of us who feel that we want this year to mean something different, to mean something significant for us, can I propose a change of perspective? Maybe a dropping of the old ways. Leaving behind some of the old ways. If you want a journey to a new beginning, some things need to be changed. We talk about resolutions. How many of you, 25th, 26th day of the new year, how many of you are still with your resolutions? Really? Uh, nobody? Uh? No one made resolutions. Someone told me, before, Pastor, I made one resolution every year. I resolve not to make resolutions. It's, a, it's almost like a phenomenon, you know. Gyms in January, right? The gyms, full, packed with people. You want to sign up for membership? Go next month. Because the, gyms, the gym membership will drop. If you want to do, if you want to see something new happen, there are things that you have to leave behind in order to start fresh. We always say, new year, new you. How are you going to do it? The new you starts when we begin to analyse what we need to leave behind. Analyse what we need to change. Because there are things that we have settled in that are holding us into the routine that we are trying to change from. So we've got to be thinking in ourselves, which are the areas? The second thought, what frightens you the most about where God might be calling you towards? As I was reading, um, Genesis chapter 12. Verse 1, we are very familiar with it. If you have your Bibles open, I want you to look two verses above verse 1. In Genesis chapter 11, maybe Stephen can help me. Genesis chapter 11, verse 31. Terah is the son, is the father of Abraham. The Bible says that Terah took his son, Abram, his grandson, Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law, Sarai, the wife of his son, Abram, and together they set out from Ur of the Chaldees. That's where they were from, the Ur of the Chaldees. Terah, with his family, they set out from Ur of the Chaldees to go to Canaan. Terah was the one who was journeying to Canaan. But when they arrived at Haran, Terah settled in Haran. He was journeying to Canaan. And we know Canaan is the promised land, amen? He was journeying there. But when he came to the town of Haran, he stayed there. And verse 32, it's quite a sad verse. Verse 32. Terah lived 205 years. That's not the sad part. Okay? But he died in Haran. He died without reaching 
his destination. He died without reaching his promised land. I believe Terah possibly could have heard from God the call to Canaan. And he went, but he stopped halfway. My second point is simply this. What frightens us about what God may be calling you towards? I was in my in-laws, with my in-laws yesterday. And we were joking that uh, it used to be 15, 20 years ago, USJ used to be a frightening place during a uh, uh, festive season because it was like a ghost town. Actually, not, not frightening. Like, I used to enjoy it, like, you know. Because everybody goes home. USJ will be empty. And we can reclaim the roads. You know, there are a lot of my friends who are locals in PJ. They says we can reclaim our, our roads, but not anymore. Like. Everyone from outskirts now have settled in the Klang Valley. But my question, sometimes we know what God is calling us towards and what frightens us about God's leading and guiding. The unknown. Why did Terah not make that journey onwards? Why do sometimes we know what is good that we should be doing? But it is terrifying sometimes to do it. I know I can do this, but you know, I don't dare. I'm scared. I fear. There's a lot of fear. And so we, pre we allow the fear to prevent us from going further. I could do this if I wanted to, but you know, I'm, a, I'm afraid. And that will hinder us from doing more. What is it about the immediate future that makes you not want to go there? We are afraid of making mistakes. I'm not saying making mistakes is okay. But imagine you're so afraid of making mistakes that you don't try. We are so afraid of failing that we don't even try. And then we are not satisfied, but we are stuck. Are you with me, church? Yes, amen. This is something that we need to be watchful for. God told Abram, go to a land that I will show you. I will make, you, uh, I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. See, God wants us to go forward. See, my, my third point is, is, is this. In what ways have you resisted God's willingness to bless you? Huh? How many of you know that God wants to bless you? Jeremiah 29, verse 11. That God's plans are for us to prosper for us to succeed, not to harm us. We know that. We know that. But sometimes we resist the plans of God. Because the plans of God sometimes need us to take a step of faith, to stretch. And we are afraid to stretch out. We are afraid to make mistakes, as I said. See, God wants to give us a good life, a blessed life. But have we, are we resisting receiving God's blessings? Because we, we say that God never makes mistakes. And yet we are afraid to respond when we sense God is leading us in a certain way. Do you see that gap? We know, but we don't do. 
There's a lot of times when there's a lot of things that we know. I believe the Christian Christian church is a very intelligent church. Amen? Amen. Sometimes too intelligent. Amen. <laughs> too intelligent. You know why? We know our heads have so much knowledge. But do we do? What do we do with the knowledge that we have? We know all the diet do's and don'ts. We know, right? But we still love our supper. Yeah? We know it's not healthy, but we still do. The things that I shouldn't do, I do. And what I should not, what I should do, I don't do. That's human nature. God wants to bless us. Why are we resisting? Why are we choosing not the best? Isn't it possible that God wants to bless us with greatness? And it's a very Asian thing. La. Hey, you did very well. La. No, la, no, la, not me. La. Not me la. Hey, your dress looks very nice. La. No, 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 no. La. Cheap one, la. cheap one, cheap one, cheap one. I bought it from uh, Dan Taiping, 20 ringgit. Any? No one asked where you bought it from. You just said you look nice. Thank you. Amen, church. We are so afraid for compliments. We are so afraid to give compliments. We are so afraid to receive compliments. Hey, what if I com compliment Pastor Roy that he looks so good and then his head gets so bloated out? It's okay, one. Let, that's his problem. You do your part. You compliment. Amen? You compliment. You compliment. And then for our part, we must know how to receive compliments. Huh? You know, we must know how to receive compliments. Amen, church? Amen. Don't resist God's wanting to bless us. Thirdly, fourthly, sorry. In the new year, in this new season, with all that is going around. This is one season when it's, it's scary to look at the news. Yeah? What's going around? It's no longer in China. It's no longer far away. It's on our shores. Not just do we have to worry about economies. Now we have to worry about health. But in all the uncertainty that is going around, is it possible that God wants to use you to be a blessing to somebody else? In all that you are going through, God knows exactly what you are going through in every season of your life. And in, every, in, in this Season, is it possible that God wants you to be a channel of blessing? Not to see a need and say, hey, can you, can you, can you, can you help her? You yourself. One of the stories that always challenges challenge me is the story of Elijah and the, the widow at Zarephath. If you're taking notes, it's first Kings seven first Kings 17. It was a time of famine. Drought means famine, huh? No food. And God sends Elijah to a widow. Now you know, right? In the Old Testament, widows have got no means of support. And so this widow was prepared to make her last meal with her son eat and wait for death. God sent Elijah to this widow to say, make me a meal first. When I read it, I was like, because my mother raised me, right? <laughs> to take care of those who are in need. Yeah? I think most of us were raised that way. Most of us will raise our children that way. 
Elijah said, feed me first and then there will be enough for you. What if the lady said, let me do it the other way around. Nah. I eat first and then left over, I'll feed you. You know what would have happened? That lady would have had her meal. I, I believe there would not have been any, any leftover. She would have died, but God would have provided for Elijah. I believe. But thankfully, that lady said, okay. She gave him a meal and there was enough left over for the entire season of drought. God knows what we are going through. God knows exactly how and, and I believe God wants us to be a blessing to someone else, to others. Because God is calling us not to be a reservoir. You know what's a reservoir? All come in, nothing go out. God is calling us to be a river. The young man who came to Jesus, to, who came to Jesus, the young man who had a, no, he had a dream, not came to Jesus. Jesus was telling the parable that he, he had so much of his harvest that what did he plan to do? Tear down his barns and build bigger barns. He already had barns. He already had enough. Now there was an opportunity here, an overflow. What do you do with the overflow? This is the season we are wanting overflows. Amen? We are praying, we are hoping for overflows. What are we going to do with the overflows? To build bigger barns. And the parable says, tonight your soul is asked of you. What will happen to what you have? We are, we are asked to be channels of blessing to those around us. You know, we were, we were just talk, talking and I think many of us have realised this. This, year, this new year seems to be a little bit lower key. Yeah? Lower key. Uncertainties. Lack. But still, I still hear fireworks. I still hear, like, like someone, someone posted, it's like, that's the sound of money burning. Uh. And there's a lot of money burning. The restaurants are still full. Shopping centres are still full. Even though it's low-key, Many of us are able to celebrate. But there are those who are not able to. Whether it's financially, whether it's something in life that is not allowing, not, they're not able to celebrate. Sometimes you just don't feel like celebrating. There are always those who are slightly lesser than us. And whatever we have, someone has less. Can we look around and be a channel, be a river of blessing in the seasons that we are currently in? If you have two, you have one to give. Amen, church. Can I invite the worship team to come up? Even as we are in this season, can I just remind us Stay because I have another point and I want to make this point. Genesis chapter 12 is known as the Abrahamic blessing. That we are blessed to be a blessing. We have come into a season. We have come into a season where I'm glad that we are doing the gift of blessing. Someone has already enabled us to go further than we planned to go. Amen to that. But we want to go and be a blessing. That's the, the, the season that the church is in. 
Are we consumers or are we contributors? Do we have an outreach mentality or a give me mentality? If you want to look at restoration and rebuilding and renewal, if you look at Genesis chapter 12, one of the key themes that I have not mentioned is what did God say to Abraham, to Abram? God told Abram, I will. I will show you. I will make of you. I will bless you. I will for you. Was Abram chosen because he was the best man around? No. Abram had his mistakes. He had his flaws. Was Abram chosen because he was smarter than everybody else? No. Abram was chosen because he was faithful. Terah turned back. Abram journeyed. He reached the promised land. He was faithful. This morning, this message is not about asking you to do better. This message is not about asking you to try harder. It's not about asking you to try again. This morning, I want to invite you, I want to to encourage you, let go, let God. Let God. Let go, drop what we need to drop. Step away from what we need to step away. And step into what God is calling us to. Can we just... Can we just arise? Can I invite the worship team to just lead us? And allow the Spirit of God to just minister. When we say that God, you are worthy. You are worthy. Help me to be faithful to you.